Welcome everyone to the Intel Builders webinar program. Thank you for taking the time to join us today for our presentation titled True Enterprise Class Centralized and BME Storage for e from E8 Storage. Before we get started, I want to point out some of the features of the Bright Talk tool that may improve your experience. There is a questions tab below your viewer. I encourage our live audience to please ask questions at any time. Our presenters will hold answering them until the end of the presentation. Below your viewing screen, you will also find an attachments tab with additional documentation and reference materials, including a number of websites and documents mentioned in this presentation. Finally, at the end of the presentation, please take the time to provide feedback using the rating tab. We value your thoughts and will use the information to improve our future webinars. Intel Builders webinar series takes place live every week. So check the channel to see what is upcoming and access our growing library of recorded content. Today we are pleased to welcome Zib Serlong, Director, Systems Architecture, and Ron Herman, Director, Sales Engineering, both with EA Storage. Mr. Serlong is an expert in the field of architecture, design, prototyping, and integration of complex systems in the areas of storage systems and networking. Mr. Sorlin has extensive experience as a system architect and management positions at companies such as Primary Data Inc., a data virtualization company, IBM XIV, a scale-out high-end enterprise block storage system, where he managed hardware, research and development, R&D department, and Connex Technology, High Performance Networking, ACIS, or ASIC. Mr. Herman is a veteran in the storage and networking industry. Prior to joining E8 Storage, Mr. Herman worked at IBM after the Diligent Technologies acquisition. He also held key positions at several startups, including Prominent and Agile, both acquired by Lucent, and Cereva acquired by EMC. Mr. Herman also served as the systems group leader for the Michigan Supreme Court and worked at Chipcom, acquired by 3Com, and Timeplex, acquired by Unisys. Welcome, Ziv and Ron, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So I'll start with, uh, so this is Ziv Serling. Uh, so I'll start for with the uh, introduction uh, of, the, of the team. Uh, somehow the, okay, let you want to move the slide because uh, my computer is not. Yeah, active. go ahead, Ziv. Okay, so the, the EA storage was founded in late of 2014. Uh, it was uh, founded by uh, two, the two founders came from IBM XAV, and uh, a lot of the team as well, as uh, was just uh, mentioned, came from the IBM XAV, uh, XAV as well, with a lot of storage uh, uh, industry and background. Uh, the, the two co-founders, Ivan Ori, uh, was the uh, R&D manager and, uh, of the XAV, and actually grew the team from uh, uh, about 10 people to more than 100 people. And from a revenue perspective, the product itself grew up from $5 million per year to $400 million uh, per year. And Alex Friedman, the second co-founder of Sanity, the VP r and uh, was uh, uh, the software manager of XAV. Uh, and prior to that, he was, was also working in a uh, Wanova that was acquired as well. Uh, the the team, the we are one. Can you move the slides, or it, everyone is seeing that? I don't see that. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, and uh, uh, the we are, we are backed up by three VCs: uh, Excel, Magma, and uh, Vertex. Uh, we just uh, were founded about a few months ago from the second round, and we count a total of $18 million as a company. Uh, R&D is based in Israel, uh, in Tel Aviv. We are more than 35 uh, employees, and uh, sales, marketing, and our CEO, Zivano, is located uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, so just from a... a on the, uh, can you move another slide? I'm that. Uh, so on the team itself, uh, from the executive team, so we, we have, I have already mentioned uh, Alex and Zivan, we have Danny uh, Malamed, who also came from, uh, uh, from uh, XAV and the diligent uh, acquisition, is our uh, uh, R&D manager and, uh, as well. 
And uh, we have uh, Vali Osman, who is the VP of product based in the U.S. And Ron, I'll let you uh, introduce yourself as well. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, my name is Ron Herman, and um, I actually um, have worked with uh, several of these people at other companies, uh, notably uh, Diligent, and also spent time at IBM um, actually selling um, flash storage, the IBM uh, flash system, Generation 1 uh, flash stuff. So have a, a deep background both in uh, you know, networking and in storage. Um, so, and, and that really leads to, you know, the challenge, what we're trying to, what we're building and the, the, the problem that we're solving for customers. Um, you know, uh, ha as I just mentioned, um, I actually came, I actually joined E8 about a uh, little less than a year ago and came from a background where I was uh, selling, you know, flash-based storage, you know, competing with EMCs, Extreme IO, competing with Pure Storage, Solid Fire. Um, in the, the whole list of, of what we call Generation 1 flash uh, solutions. And, um, you know, if you go back three to four years ago, um, really those SSD flash-based storage systems were really targeting disk replacement, right? Um, you know, you're running your database today on disk. Uh, if you move it to uh, SSDs or, or flash, you can speed up your database, you can speed up your applications, and we can sweep the floor of disk, and uh, life is good. <clears throat> and, uh, and and that really was the play, you know, three or four years ago. Uh, about over the last 18 months, though, as a lot of the low-hanging fruit in disk replacement was was uh, done, what customers started challenging, you know, the Generation One flash vendors with was, well, what about these? high performance applications what about uh, these applications that were running uh, on fusion IO boards or were using local SSDs to do um, those were the challenges and those are th that is really the market and the, the pr when we built e8 that's really what we're targeting what all flash could not do could not compete with so if you really look at What's happened over the last couple of years, you know, we started out, uh, you know, six or seven years ago with the first generation of SSDs, usually SATA-based. They were, you know, from a performance standpoint compared to disk, they were awesome, right? 200,000 IOPS. We'll, we'll focus on the, the um, um, we'll, we'll focus on the, the performance from an IOPS standpoint. So, you know, uh, SATA SSDs, you know, 80,000, 50,000 to 80,000 IOPS. SAS SSDs, you know, 100,000 uh, um, IOPS, uh, v pretty good latency. You know, the, uh, the the SAT SSDs, maybe 200 microsecond latency. The SAS SSDs brought that down a bit. But then, um, you know, over the last couple of years, we've uh, had uh, companies like Intel who have brought to the market NVMe SSDs. And if you look at the performance of uh, and these, this chart is just showing single NVMe SS, uh, single SSDs. You know, you have single SSDs now approaching almost a million IOPS. You know, we, we, we put 750 for, for the average NVMe SSD. If you look at the latency, uh, NVMe's SS, uh, NVMe SSDs have latency much, much lower than, uh, you know, SAS or SATA SSDs. Um, so what we, what we have built at E8 is a product that is not really necessarily a disk replacement like the Gen 1 flash um, solutions, we've really built a new architecture. A lot of that has to do with NVMe and the speed of NVMe, but we do a lot of things to um, take advantage of that speed of the, of the newest N, uh, SSDs. So, um, you know, here's another chart um, that kind of illustrates the point I was trying to make. So if you take, for example, an all-flash array, with say 24 SSDs, uh, maybe we'll pick on uh, EMC with uh, one of their uh, extreme I/O boxes, right? Um, you know, you have 24 SSDs in it, but if you look at the performance, you know, you're only really about uh, you know 300,000 IOPS and latency around a half a millisecond. Again, compare that to a single NVM SSD, NVMe SSD, and you know, uh, a single SSD can actually outperform an entire um, almost a, a cluster of four of the uh, EMC, just to pick on them. The same is true for pure solid fire, etc. 
So um, what we're finding is the all-flash arrays, again, meant for disk replacement, can't really compete in the world of you know, high-speed analytics and machine learning and some of the stuff we'll talk about later in the presentation. So, so what does a customer do um, you know, if you do need to do machine learning or you do have high-speed analytics, fraud detection, et cetera? Typically what we've found is, is customers use, you can either do two things. You can uh, use SSDs as local storage in their servers to get high performance, right? And we see that either with local SSDs or with things like, you know, the, the older Fusion I.O. boards. Or you can put those SSDs in an all-flash array, but you actually, so you gain some, you know, the, the management that goes along with a centralized storage array, but you certainly lose the performance of the native SSDs certainly the performance of native NVMe SSDs. So what more customers did be for, the, for the reason of performance and are still doing is basically using local SSDs or you know, things like the Fusion I.O. boards to do their high performance computing because they can't, even though they would like the management and the RAID reliability and centralization and virtualization of a storage array, they can't give up the performance um, to uh, of their applications, so that's really the key um, challenge and the key um, uh, key thing we solve at E8. So let's take a look at uh, you know what customers. What are the problems though when because your applications need such critical performance, you have to go with local SSDs. Obviously, there's a provisioning problem. You know, each of the SSDs belong only to that server. So we have an example here where we have, uh, you know, three racks of servers, um, uh, and these these racks of servers are are doing different things, right? So um, you know, you end up creating an island of storage. Your capacity becomes inefficient. Sometimes customers will do things like mirror the uh, internal SSDs. So eight SSDs really become the capacity of four SSDs. And then typically these, that, that SSD set, that RAID set, if you will, is not provisioned 100%. So you lose 70% you know, uh, uh, of the capacity of those SSDs. Um, the other thing that happens is if you don't do local mirroring of those SSDs, you end up doing replicas, right? So you may say, okay, I have eight SSDs in this server, and that's a, you know, a RAID 0. There's no protection if I lose an SSD, but I'll make two or three copies of that in my data center, or, or my application will replicate that to two or three places. So you, again, have uh, inefficiencies uh, if, uh, if, uh, if an SSD happens to fail, or you're, you're you're doing inefficient uh, methods to prevent against a single SSD failure. Obviously, then, if you have uh, local SSDs um, in server A, there's not a way to, ser to share any extra capacity that you might have with server B, right? You, you definitely have islands of storage. And in a lot of respects, this is going back, you know, 20 years ago when servers had their own local hard drives, right? And then the whole concept of a, of a SAN emerged, right? You can also, you, you almost want to think of, of you know, uh, what E8 does is kind of SAN version 2, right? It's now a SAN for uh, high-performance uh, NVMe SSDs. Um, you can't grow the storage. If you, if you get to a point in your server where you're out of slots, right, there's uh, not a lot of choice. You can maybe go to bigger servers with more slots, um, but a lot of times customers are looking to um, actually make the server uh, density uh, uh, slimmer in their app, in their data centers. They may have two or three U servers today and they want to go to one U servers or two U time four servers um, and, and basically take advantage of some of the new things like, uh, you know, um, based on Intel chips most of the time are, are, are coming to the market with. Um, and the other thing too is if one server requires, what if one server requires more than the others? Um, how, maybe how can you load balance and those types of things? So, um, you know, uh, there's, there's the local SSDs solve the performance problem, but, and, and even the, the slower SAS and SATA SSDs are now getting slow compared to what you can do with NVMe. But for most of the time, local SSDs meet the performance need, but they certainly don't meet, meet the efficiency and uh, management needs that customers have known and loved when it comes to SANS for many years. Um, 
you know, you also end up with an application silo prob- uh, problem. You know, each application has its own storage. It has its own redundancy. It has its own uh, data recovery scheme. There's inflexibility between the applications. You know, some are read intensive, some are write intensive. And um, there's, you know, there's always going to be, there's usually more than one application in your data center, although we, we do have work with customers who have a single application that's their thing. But uh, in, in most cases, there are multiple applications that have different needs um, for, for I.O. and performance and, it's, and uh, reliability. All right. Let's, uh, so, you know, when you – and the other sort of issue with using local SSDs as persistent storage is, you know, purchasing decisions. When you, when you buy a server, you pretty much up front need to know how many SSDs to buy, and a lot of times you overbuy. You say, okay, well, today there are 3.2 terabyte uh, SSDs available, so I'll go ahead and buy eight of them. I really only need, you know, the, the capacity of maybe a two terabyte, but, you know, I'll go ahead and overbuy now because I don't want to have to mess with the server. Um, the other thing, t- too, is I've worked with a lot of customers in big data centers, and they all have their little cart that they, you know, they drive around or push around where they have sort of the the SSDs or the hard drives, you know, sort of that old Monty Python movie where they have the cart going through the town, like bring out your dead. Well, they, they have that cart for bring out your, your dead SSDs. So, you know, in some of the data centers I work in, there's, you know, tens of thousands of servers. So at any given time, they're, they're replacing an SSD, and that usually means some management and maintenance on the server. Um, so they're, and then they have a lot of them that they're dealing with. And taking an SSD down usually means taking that server down. Um, sometimes not, but a lot of times it does. So, um, and then the lifestyle decision. You know, when as your servers, <clears throat> excuse me, as your servers get phased out today, um, your SSDs also get phased out, right? So a, a lot of times there's this whole migration project that has to happen because you're not only replacing those three U servers with one U servers but you're also having to deal with the local storage. And it isn't really divorce where you have, you know, server storage and migration means migrating server and storage. With EA8, we can solve that problem uh, with, with our centralized method. And, and we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about what E8 brings to the table here in a few slides. All right, so... <clears throat> So why, you know, so the the main question, uh, and I and I actually spent the first month or two when I was with E8, going around meeting, you know, our customers and meeting uh, new prospects, and uh, you know, customers customers would tell me the things they're doing, like machine learning or high speed analytics, and naively I would say I remember to one of my very first uh, sales sales calls with a with the customer I was talking to, they were describing this, you know, machine learning application that required incredible performance. And they were doing it with local SSDs. And I innocently said to them, I said, well, why don't you use like a, a an extreme I.O. or a pure? And they looked at me and they said, you know what, we tried it very briefly, but it just didn't bring the performance we needed to do this application. We found the only thing that would work would be local SSDs. And, you know, if you step back and you kind of look at what an all-flash array is, I mean, it is a bunch of SSDs, so you, you, you kind of think, well, why can't that all-flash array, that Generation 1 all-flash array, be able to provide the performance that, you know, this machine learning customer needs? I mean, we're, we're, it's SSDs. It's not like these all-flash arrays, uh, you know, have hard drives in them. Some of them do a hybrid solution, but, you know, I ask specifically, why not a ha- all-flash array? But if you look at what the bottleneck is, usually you'll have SSDs that are, say, on a SAS um, um, backbone that are connected to two controllers, right? And then you have servers that connect to those controllers, but those those two controllers usually end up being the bottleneck, right? That's why, you know, some of the Generation 1 um, co- um, solutions out there, they may have, you know, 24, 48, 96 SSDs, which, if you did the math, should be providing, you know, 5 million IOPS, but that solution really only provides maybe a million IOPS, or in some cases as low as like 300,000 IOPS, right? The bottleneck is really that controller, and this is the reason why, you know, the, the customers who are doing, you know, mission-critical uh, mission critical and high-speed requirement uh, applications are not using the flash arrays. I remember when I used to go around doing bake-offs, 
if I had to do a Bake Off against another Generation 1 flash array for maybe a, a application that was now on disk, it was, okay, bring it on. But if the customer said, oh, you know what, I want to do a bake-off, and the local storage today is Fusion I.O., <laughs> I think all of the all-flash array vendors would run with their tails between their legs because you, they could not touch the performance of, of that local you know, SSD storage. So um, the solution <laughs> is E8. What do we build? So we actually build a... Um, solution that kind of eliminates the all-flash array dual controller bottleneck. And we have a new uh, patented scale-out architecture that does that. So first of all, our hardware ingredients are all NVMe drives. I'll show you the uh, speeds and feeds and the quantities coming up, but our, our media is all flash uh, NVMe, and we use uh, converged Ethernet. So we use uh, on our system a 40, 50, or 100 gig connection to the network, and we have multiple connections, up to eight connections. Um, on the server side, it is also connected through converged Ethernet. Uh, we can provide 10 to, to 40 times the performance of an all-flash array. And I actually have a little chart here on this slide where I'm showing an all-flash array you know, at 300,000 IOPS, with the uh, E8 D24, our 2U box, we'll talk about in a second, we can actually push about 10 million IOPS out of 2U, right? So we're really taking the advantage of the native speed of those 24 NVM SSDs. How do we do it? We actually um, use an architecture where we have an E8 controller, we call it, but then we actually put a E8 driver in each one of the customer servers, and that, and that driver does some of the work that a controller would normally do. So um, it actually sort of deputizes each of the hosts and uh, allows the system to scale to the 10 million IOPS. 10 million IOPS, you would obviously have more than one server, but if you had 20 servers all connected to an E8 box, you would get a uh, cumulative um, performance of, of 10 million IOPS because everybody's kind of contributing a little bit. It's not much. It isn't an onerous amount. It's a, it's a driver that we run, but uh, it isn't anything that's going to take, you know, all the CPU or anything like that. So, um, you know, it, it, it is basically a little bit of the controller logic sort of deputized out to all the servers. Um, next slide here. All right, so let's talk about what we're building. It's called the E8 D24. Um, it, um, some of the components are, uh, first of all, it's, it's very high density. Um, our 2U unit um, starts as small as 24 terabytes, and then we can scale all the way to 172 terabytes raw with the 6.4 terabyte SSDs. We, we can use any uh, U, U2 SSDs, including uh, Intel's dual-ported SSDs. And uh, Ziv will talk a little later in the presentation about some of the work we, we at E8 have been doing with Intel, uh, specific around the dual-ported SSDs. Intel has brought you know the dual-ported SSDs to the market. We're, um, I believe, one of the only storage uh, solutions that can actually take advantage of those dual-ported SSDs. Um, so we, we can support multiple tiers of NVMe SSDs, um, meaning you can have some read-intensive, some write-intensive, um, and, and so forth. Um, we can do uh, – we use strictly off-the-shelf hardware. So our secret sauce is really our E8 software, right? We use a, a chassis um, with, uh, you know, either 24 – as I say at the bottom here, we also sell a 1U10 uh, NVMe entry system – but that is, you know, standard Intel SSDs, for example, standard um, we use for our uh, networking connections, uh, Mellanox connection, Mellanox HBA. So it's all commodity hardware, uh, and then we run our software on it. So it's really software-defined NVMe. Um, I had one question come up, and I'm going to answer that question. Uh, the question is, how does the latency of E8 storage compare to local SSDs? It's a great question. And uh, the next slide here is it actually compares very, very well, and that is actually one of the challenges most customers always ask us to, to show them in a POC or in a demo, right? So we can uh, – so our rated latency is 
uh, 100 uh, microsecond read, 40 microsecond write, uh, end-to-end -end latency, and that's you know based on a 4K uh, a random read IOP. Um, our RAID 6, so, so one thing we'll talk about is we can actually, across those 24 NVMe SSDs, do a RAID 6, where two of them are, are parity drives uh, you know, for, for data protection. That only takes about uh, 10 microseconds of overhead if you uh, deploy E8 in a RAID 6 mode. We, we actually have three modes, RAID 0, RAID 5, and RAID 6. Uh, most customers like the RAID 6 because it protects against SSD failures, which is one of the main problems local SSDs uh, it has. Um, so it has the lowest possible latency um, that you can get for remote storage. And, and this is usually the, the discussion we have with the machine learners or the, um, you know, the, the high-speed analytics crowd is this is like, you know, our local SSDs give us awesome latency. So we want to see it on one server, but we also want to see it on eight servers or 24 servers. And that is really the value we bring is we can scale that low latency across many, many servers. So, you, you, so we're almost always compared to this is my local SSD set. The, you know, I'll run FIO on it, and it's doing 80,000 IOPS at 300 microseconds. That's, that's my local SSDs. You show me what you can do, E8, and that's usually where... Uh, we end up doing POCs, and it's like we'll show it with the first server and then with multiple servers because that's where it really matters. Um, next slide here. All right. Oh, sorry. Let me go back one. All right. So um, the other thing that um, you know I've mentioned earlier is we can actually get from 24 NVMe SSDs about 10 million uh, IOPS, and those, those are 4K uh, uh, reads. We do about 2 million uh, 4K uh, writes. Uh, bandwidth, we can do about 40 gig uh, read and about 20 gig write. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, the connection to the, to the customer network is through uh, converged Ethernet. So we uh, do uh, 40 or 50 ports, uh, 48 ports of 40 or 50 gig or four ports of 100 gig, depending on whether it's the 1U or the 2U. And that is always a, a rocky connection, um, so the host needs to also have a, um, a you know a port that connects into the converged Ethernet uh, infrastructure as well. We talk all uh, Ethernet uh, rocky uh, over Ethernet. All right, um, so this this is a little the uh presentation is a little quick triggered when i hit a button it it uh, goes it, it's actually pretty fast so we also are um have uh, thin provisioning in our in our uh product plan which will um allow for up to 88% ssd utilization um you can add ssds to the system as you need to um with the one u10 that you actually would always get it with 10 ssds but with the 2U, um, the D24, you can actually start with a subset of those 24 SSDs and then add those as you need to. You can also um, chain uh, uh, enclosures on top of each other. So if you run out of the capacity of a single E8, you can add a, another E8, and then that E8 uh, driver on your host can actually talk to multiple E8 systems. So you would get LUNs presented through, um, you know, through multiple uh, E8 devices. The, the storage itself uh, is presented to the host across converged Ethernet as a block device. So if you do on your, on your Linux uh, server, for example, you do an LS block, you actually see a slash dev E8B0, uh, for example, uh, block device. And on that block device, you can, you know, make a file system and, and uh, you know, or, you know, uh, and put your application on it. So it appears to, to your OS just like, um, uh, a block, it, it is a block device. Um, the beauty is, too, uh, we can mix and match different size and, and, uh, and types of SSDs. And the nice thing is you now have a single plane of glass to manage all the SSDs in your infrastructure, right? So you, you, we're really kind of taking, um, we're, we're kind of making, you know, SAN version 2 uh, for SSDs and then kind of uh, divorcing them from a single local server and having them be centralized so, so they're usable by everybody and managed at one point. Um, 
The other point is um, we are actually selling an enterprise-class storage array here. So this thing is not a, a J, J boss, uh, you know, just a bunch of, of, of flash. This thing is actually enterprise-class. So it's, uh, you know, we do um, dual parity and single parity RAID, as I, as I mentioned before. You can deploy it as RAID uh, 0 if you want to, but uh, we also support RAID 5 and RAID 6, so we can support dual SSD failure. There's no single point of failure in our 2U24 um, um, design. We have multiple controllers. Uh, we have uh, many network uh, ports. Uh, uh, we use dual port uh, Mellanox port cards, but there are multiple cards. Um, and we also support, uh, as I mentioned before, Intel's uh, dual ported SSDs. So we can support a single port SSD or you know, if you're interested in using Intel's new dual-ported SSDs, and we've got a chart coming up on, you know, um, the power of doing that in a, in a few slides here. Um, but it is true HA. You know, everything is hot swappable. Fans, controllers, SSDs. Uh, you know, code uh, uh, upgrades are all uh, online, and uh, we actually have a power uh, failure protection built into the system as well. All right, so, and you know we have a rich feature set. Um, we we do uh, you know we we have plans for OpenStack Cinder, um, storage QoS, uh, replication snapshots, and thin provisioning. So we're really building a uh, enterprise class design um, based on incredibly fast NVMe SSDs running uh, remote DMA. Right, so it's kind of like the fastest infrastructure you could possibly have, the fastest media. And but all the features you know and love when it comes to a enterprise class storage array. And you know um, it it actually is pretty cost effective. We've got case studies out there, and we've done work with customers. When you compare, um, you know, having to put you know eight SSDs or or more in every single server, and having some of the inefficiencies that go along with that versus centralizing it, um, it actually, the, R, the ROI usually is pretty easy to make. Um, you know, as we mentioned, we support any of the NVM SSDs, either the single or dual ported. You know, again, Intel's been our partner with the dual ported so far. Um, scaling out is cheaper than scaling up. Um, our, our server itself, our hardware, um, is, is not real onerous as far as the amount of CPU and RAM that we need because, again, we've, we've sort of um, created a new architecture where, uh, you know, everybody, uh, everything contributes to the performance of the, the, the system. So we don't need to have, you know, huge processors and huge amount of RAM in our controller. Um, you know, we can do RAID, stripe, uh, RAID wide striping so we can actually get up to um, you know, 88% SSD utilization, you know, by uh, not having to do mirrors anymore and by able to do doing things like thin provisioning, et cetera. Et cetera. And, you know, for a flash um, storage array, you would expect very low power. Um, so those are our numbers for, you know, uh, 800 watts typical, 1,200 watts max for uh, our 2U uh, system. So very, very uh, green, if you will. Um, all right, so why centralize the MDME, right? So who is, which customers are going to take advantage of this? Where, um, where does it make sense? Um, it is storage, right? So you could use the E8 storage array for any application, right, any block-based application. But for, for, um, for practical uh, standpoints, it's really targeted for customers who need the performance we can bring. Anyone using, for example, uh, local SSDs, um, you know, if, if, you're, if you have applications that um, have to run on local SSDs or you're using maybe the older Fusion I.O. boards, as I said earlier, that is a sweet spot for looking at centralizing uh, your flash storage, if you will. Um, you know, if you, if you say external storage just can't cut it or it just isn't fast enough, that is usually a, a good application to, to target for NVMe. You know, obviously the usual suspects when it comes to uh, real-time analytics, you know, uh, databases, NoSQL databases, uh, high performance, uh, computing, uh, you know, uh, enables new applications like machine learning, you know, the Internet of Things, 
real-time uh, performance monitoring, um, security audits, uh, 4K video, video editing, editing, any place where you really need, um, you know, a high performance, but you would like the efficiencies of centralized storage. And it's also perfect for new data centers or server consolidation projects. It's very common that customers um, are continuing to roll out data centers and are looking for a new architecture for that, or their existing data center, they have servers that are three to four years old that are, you know, from a density standpoint, bigger than they would like. So they want to kind of slim down the servers. And they, uh, so that's a good time to consider uh, centralized NVMe storage when you're doing a server consolidation because you might want to go with top-of-the-rack storage and then focus just on the blades um, uh, for compute themselves. So there's, it's a way to sort of design a new data center uh, and do it a different way than you have been doing if you need the performance of local SSDs. All right, so this is a good example of uh, you know a typical engagement from a from a TCO standpoint and and what ends up, what it ends up looking like. So before you know we have uh, 48 servers in Iraq. Um, we have uh, you know each of the 48 servers has uh, eight of the 1.92 terabyte SSDs, so, so call it about two terabyte SSDs, right? The local utilization of those is about 30%, right? So afterwards, what happens is the customer actually consolidates into a uh, E8-2D24 um, system, right? And uh, is able to maintain the performance, is able to maintain the low latency, uh, in a lot of cases can actually give the applications a little more capacity or be able to grow that capacity on the fly. And uh, when you look at it from a cost standpoint, uh, the numbers actually look pretty good. If you do, say, for example, a, a, a three- or four-year TCO, um, you know, the E8 uh, storage portion of this is actually, um, you know, 40% lower as it's showing on this chart. So um, it isn't like this is a more expensive solution. This is actually a much more efficient solution. And again, uh, the job one of E8 has to be to match the current performance and low latency of the applications today. If we can't do that, then uh, customers would stick with local SSDs. But we can do that, and, and this is what uh, you know, a typical uh, TCO looks like. Uh, next slide is, is a is sort of a case study we've worked with a customer had an interesting application where um, they had uh, every day they would build, do a build of uh, a data set, we'll call it, and then they actually had, uh, they would have to load that data set on many, many servers, and then during the day that data set was used, uh, um, the same data set was used by hundreds of, of, of users across hundreds of servers. And it was all on local SSDs, right? The data lake uh, existed on many, many servers, uh, exact same data lake on multiple, multiple servers, and they just spread it out across the servers because they needed to handle that many end users. So they kind of challenged us, well, could you, could you actually do a, uh, a shared storage environment where we can you know, do, say, a 24 to 1 consolidation onto E8, where you hold the data for those servers, and, and then we only have to do an update to that, to that data set once instead of 24 or 48 times, right? And, but we still need the same performance across those 24 servers. So we were able to do that and um, actually um, started with a fan out of, of 24 to 1. We can actually probably handle more on a single box than 24 to 1. So it actually greatly reduces the number of replicas there. And because in a centralized manner, um, in a shareable manner, we can match the same performance of local SSDs, it, it allows customers to re-architect the way they were doing things and in some cases entire data centers. All right. Um, at this point, I'll turn it back over to Zeev um, to talk about some okay. testing that uh, he was involved with with Intel. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Uh, so this is actually a slide that uh, Intel published, and uh, this is the reason that I wanted to put uh, this uh, specifically experiment that we did together with Intel, uh, one of uh, many experiments that we did, but this is one that Intel uh, published uh, 
during the dual port uh, D3700 and D3600 launch back in March timeframe. And the focus here was to present the high availability uh, using the EA storage technology. So the, what we did here from a test perspective, we connected four hosts to the E8 uh, D24 uh, system uh, with 24 Intel uh, SSD uh, populated in the system, over 40 gig uh, converged uh, network uh, uh, topology. Uh, and the focus here was to show that uh, even due, uh, during a network failure, so we have one controller that, one controller that uh, we induced the failure to the controller, uh, we still maintain in few seconds, it was about three seconds, to get into the full performance of the uh, disk specific uh, environment of all the 3.3 million IOPS. And this is something that uh, if you think, uh, I'm not familiar with any, any storage uh, array today that it can maintain the same level of performance during a failure uh, scenario. scenario. Uh, so that this is basically the, the work and the experiment that we did together with Intel. Okay, great, Steve. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's a it's a great story, and again, it um, it really is sort of the architecture you would expect from a enterprise class storage array, right? Um, the ability to have dual ported uh, Intel NVMe SSDs, multiple controllers you know, um, hot swappable SSDs in the front, um, you know, power supplies, fans, all that good stuff. Um, with some of the, the virtualization features of, of E8, it's, it's actually um, a very compelling story. It was, um, you know, having sold the Generation 1, um, you know, all flash arrays, I, I saw the story at E8 as being one that uh, made a lot of sense. And, you know, uh, companies like EMC with their DSSD offering was out there. So I really saw, you know, NVMe storage uh, as really sort of the next wave. We also uh, refer to uh, this wave as uh, Generation 2 flash or top of the rack or rack scale flash. So you'll, you'll hear, hear this whole, this, these, these architectures based on NVMe referred to as a, as a, uh, as a, uh, as a whole new class of storage. From a competitive standpoint, I think we are the only ones that can deliver, you know, for example, 10 million IOPS in 2U. Uh, we can deliver all the HA functionality. We can we we deliver some features and RAID um, protection. We um, can um, provide uh, a virtualization layer where the 24 MVM SSDs are not presented as single SSDs like a JBOD model. You actually pool those 24. Um, if you do RAID 6, you have the capacity of 22 uh, NVMe SSDs into a single pool, of which then you can provision out block based LUNs to your servers connected. So, um, you know, it isn't like if you had 22 servers, each would get its own SSD. That, that, that's a JBOD model. We actually do virtualization across uh, the converged Ethernet where you can create LUNs of different sizes for different servers, right? It isn't, uh, you know, 22 servers, each server gets one terabyte LUNs or something like that. You get the full feature of virtualization to be able to create the LUNs of the size you need and present them to the specific servers you need. So it is a true enterprise class virtualization, uh, high HA solution. So, um, you know, in a, in a nutshell, we, we say, you know, it's, it's the performance of SSDs, native NVMe SSDs. It has the reliability of centralized storage. It's hyperscalable. You know, um, we, we target environments where, you know, there's server consolidation going on or customers are deploying racks and racks of servers. Uh, we would like to be at the top of all those racks, providing the, the very fastest storage for all the servers in that rack and all the servers in that data center. And from an affordability standpoint, it actually is, um, it actually is um, affordable um, from a comparison to what you've been doing with local SSDs, right? Um, uh, and especially if you're using uh, things like PCI-based uh, boards, you know, Fusion I.O. Or, or some of the others out, that are out there, uh, the comparison from a cost standpoint is actually pretty attractive. And, and, and thank you. Um, 
that's the end of our deck. I'm going to uh, switch to addressing some of the questions that are out there. And the, the, the first question is, um, where can I get in more information on E8 storage or have someone contact me? Great question. If you go out to e8storage.com, um, in many places you'll, see, you'll, you'll find a button to, to ask for more information. Um, you can just simply, uh, it, it, it actually links to an info at e8storage.com. If you want to just send an email to info at e8storage.com, that's fine. But um, if you go out to E8 Storage, you can uh, look around on the product and then just you know hit one of the buttons, give us the information on uh, who you are, your your email and phone, and then we'll we'll get back to you usually within a day. So um, just everything you need to to have us contact you is out there. Um, okay, so a couple of the questions I've already a answered. Um, what applications benefit from NVMe? SSDs, as I mentioned, you know, uh, anything that obviously anything that's using local SSDs today, but typically it's you know high-speed uh, analytics, uh, fraud detection, uh, high-speed audit, you know, um, high-speed trading, arbitrage, uh, trading, those types of applications, uh, machine learning, um, anything where you know you need that low latency and high performance of local SSDs, but you want to uh, be able to have that centralized, right? I had a great uh, customer example where they're working with a uh, a large database uh, to do some uh, to do an application, and because they can't uh, they can't get enough SSDs in a single server to handle the size of this database, it's quite large. Um, they actually had to shard the database across multiple servers that had local SSDs. Well, E8 solves that problem because you can now, and they didn't really need to shard the database for, they weren't CPU bound, they weren't network bound, it was storage bound. So they were actually having to provide three more servers and more network just to do this job because they couldn't get enough capacity out of local SSDs. And this is over, you know, even the capacity of, of um, some of the bigger servers. So we were able to handle that situation without having to do uh, sharding, which which made their life easier and uh, was able to to actually speed things up a little bit. But it was certainly from an ROI standpoint, it was a better story. Um, we already answered this one. Does the how does the latency of E8 storage compare to local SSDs? Uh, again, that's usually table stakes. That's usually the first thing that customers uh, want to uh, want to see. Um, here's another question: What network speeds and interfaces does E8 storage support? So on the E8 storage side, we, d we connect through a 40, a 50, or a 100 gig Ethernet connection. We usually plug into something like a, you know, a Mellanox switch or a Cisco 3232C or an Arista switch, uh, Juniper switch, et cetera. So it has to be a you know, 40 gig and above capable switch. Uh, on the host side, the host connection can be uh, um, it has to it, it, the, so the host HBA has to support Rocky. So, but that speed can be as low as 10 gig. Uh, will support 10, 25, 40, 50, or 100 on the host side. So, um, and the capacity from from a standpoint of a uh, E8 storage box is usually. You know how many connections through the network do you make in a in a in a rack? We typically keep the traffic all layer two within the same rack for performance, right? Because because Rocky is uh, you know um, network uh, dependent, right? So if everything's layer two, uh, the latency and the performance we can maintain, uh, and um, so that um, that usually is a network design phase we go through, but we're very very flexible as far as the number of the number and type of connections we can make. Question: Which operating systems do you support with the E8 driver? We support uh, many of the Linux um, offerings today. We have some other OSs on the roadmap, but um, today it's the usual suspects when it comes to to Linux. Um, you know, a question here about um, um, features, uh, what features are available now. Um, we have uh, uh, some of those features on the uh, chart are available today. Some of them are on our roadmap. 
If you could, um, please send us an email to info, dot, uh, info at ehstorage.com or go to our website, and uh, we can get into a dialogue on you uh, with that on one, one-on-one. Um, and I think that's all the questions. I will we'll hold it here for a few minutes um, and uh, see if any more customer questions come up. And again, if you, if you don't feel like uh, answering a question in the public forum here, please just reach out to us um, through our website or info at e8storage.com, and we'd be glad to talk to you. Um, Zeev, any, any color commentary or anything I missed? Uh, no, I think you cover all of it. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll give it another minute here. Um, we'll wait for a question or two to come in. If not, we'll give you a couple minutes of your day back, and uh, um, we really appreciate you uh, attending today, and, uh, and we hope to hear from you. Ron and Zeev, I don't think we're going to have any more questions, and I'd like to thank both of you for this excellent presentation, and I'd like to thank the audience for attending. Again, please don't hesitate to contact EH Storage with any questions, and I hope everybody has a really good day. All right. Thank you, Renee, and thank you, audience, uh, for attending. Thank you. Thank you.